Welcome back to the Mind Change Podcast. I'm your host, Heather McKean. And today we're covering the emotional drivers behind multiple sclerosis. According to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society, multiple sclerosis, or MS, is a disease that impacts the brain, spinal cord, and optic nerves, which make up the central nervous system and controls everything we do. The medical cause of MS is unknown, but they do know that something triggers the immune system that seems to attack the CNS or the central nervous system. The resulting damage to the myelin, which is the protective layer that's sort of insulates wire-like nerve fibers, disrupts signals to and from the brain. This interruption of communication signals uh, causes unpredictable symptoms such as numbness, tingling, mood changes, memory problems, pain, fatigue, blindness, even paralysis. Everyone's experience with MS is different and these losses may be temporary, but they can also be long-lasting. According to the NHS, MS is not curable, but that makes sense considering it is very difficult to cure something if you don't know why it's happening in the first place. Now, though I never officially received an MS diagnosis, I know that my doctors were headed in that direction. Through some of my neurology appointments, it was noted that it looked like there were plaques or lesions on my brain. Luckily, all of this happened very close to the time that my health went into crisis mode and I nearly died. And for me, this was the catalyst that pushed me to finally take my health and healing into my own hands where it had always belonged. So let's think about this. Remember that the subconscious mind often speaks through the body in metaphor or metaphoric representation. Looking back, in my case, it made perfect sense to me that I had plaques on my brain. Plaques or lesions are actually something like scar tissue. In fact, the word sclerosis means scarring. If you're familiar with my childhood environment from my book or some of my former podcast episodes, there were definitely some events that from my childhood that could have been categorized as scarring. But a traumatic event in and of itself doesn't necessarily mean that you'll end up with scar tissue in your brain. But over time, when these events are replayed over and over again, often in your subconscious mind, they become areas that we want to forget. See, MS is deeply connected with a victim mindset. There seems to have been some sort of a surrender or a giving up, a losing hope. It's a deep belief that things will never get better, therefore it's pointless to try. Now that feeling is very contradictory to our internal survival system. Metaphorically, this is where we see the body responding in symptoms that are categorized as MS. There's a basic loss of body autonomy. Muscles seem to give out. Coordination can be affected. There can be speech problems and much more. Basically, and metaphorically, the body's returning to an infant-like state of helplessness. This is in alignment with the thoughts that are going on in the subconscious mind about being helpless and victimized. Now, before we judge that attitude, it's important to remember that these people have very good reasons to come to this conclusion. So let's get into some of the drivers and possible childhood environments that help support the symptoms of MS. One of the most common base drivers is growing up in a home where perfectionism or high achievement was prized or expected or even demanded. Remember, this same environment can have different effects on different people. You may have multiple siblings grow up in this home and have drastically different coping mechanisms where one child might become intensely driven to succeed and end up choosing a highly successful career or life path. Another child might end up feeling that they can never measure up and believes that they will never have what it takes to win. So one of these kids may end up a famous surgeon and the other may end up with a debilitating case of MS. And while the surgeon path may seem like a preferable way, deep down in both siblings, they believe they can never be enough. 
they may both die still feeling like they could never win the approval of a parent or primary caregiver. The motivation will always be to win approval, not to be good, successful, or healthy human, but to be good enough to win a parent's love. Where one child might be a super achiever, the other may attempt to return to a more helpless, childlike state to ensure that they will always have someone caring for them. To be back in the blissful state of being loved for just being rather than doing anything. Both will operate under a very heavy, heavy burden. Both will be searching for a version of love and acceptance without ever really feeling like they have it. Some of the other common drivers behind MS are holding on to deep anger, resentment, or hostility. If you felt like or perceived that you were never allowed to have big feelings, especially anger as a child, yet there were some things that happened to you or to your family where anger would have been the very appropriate emotion, you will feel trapped. This can happen with childhood abuse, especially if the person who did the abusing was someone that you loved, someone who should have loved you in a better way. This can definitely be physical or sexual abuse, but it could also be abuse through neglect or abandonment. It's very common for MS sufferers to still be in relationship with the person or persons that they identify as a childhood abuser. This illustrates their felt inability to escape change or be free. In fact, the longer that this has been going on, the more quote unquote normal it feels. Yet the body and the central nervous system will continue to live in a state of fight, flight, or freeze, which of course eventually takes a very big toll on the physical body. So often MS sufferers didn't feel able to or allowed to express hurt, anger, or frustration at situations. So it all became internalized. You may feel that communication is futile, but rather than let go of the hurt, you hold on to it and you hold it close and you replay it over and over again. The reason is you're actually seeking validation that it happened and that it mattered because you did not get that validation when you were a child. Over time, this creates a rigidity in mindset and attitude. This is an overreaction or overcompensation for the feeling of being abused, uh, unprotected, unsafe, helpless, or pushed too hard, too heavily as a child. If you weren't able to speak up, then you will now attempt to control your current adult environment. Although it's being done through a lens of pessimism, negativity, and pain, it's possible that you may have been exposed to a traumatic environment as a child with no safe outlet or safe person to model how to process your emotions. And what this would have done is caused you to disassociate from your emotional self. This may seem to serve you for a while in your pursuit of achievement or success, but inevitably you'll find yourself drawn to work environments where you feel unheard, unseen, controlled, abused, and criticized. And eventually the body will begin to break down as a way to end the constant threat. It's typical in people who do MS that they are often very stubborn and have a very rigid mindset and belief system. And this comes from years of feeling controlled, pressured, and expected to perform in a certain very rigid way. As a way of rebelling, they within themselves become hard set and refuse to change. Of course, this will be perceived as a good thing within the body after years of trying to live up to someone else's standards. But unfortunately, the lens of rebellion that they're using and that everything's being filtered through is one of victimization. To heal, you do need to change. But change feels like the enemy because you were always trying to change, perform, to earn the love and acceptance of others. You don't want to give up the story of pain, hardship, and abuse because you feel like it was never recognized in the first place or validated by the abuser. So you hold on to it, waiting for it to be justified. This constant replaying and rehearsing 
of pain, neglect, and abuse is wearing on the body. The body becomes weary and it becomes depleted of anything good because the focus is on validating the bad things that have happened. Subconsciously, you would rather have your body shut, your body shut down systematically than to do what it would take to heal because changing affirms their belief that everything and everyone is against them. And this sets them, this finally will set them free from the intense pressure they feel to succeed, win, perform. It's not really them, it's their body doing it, doing the disease, so it's not really their fault. Another common driver is a feel of fear of failure. People who do MS tend to be very hard on themselves. They have a very harsh and condemning, condemning internal voice. Of course, this is often just mimicking the environment they perceived in childhood. They will def definitely and desperately want to succeed, but oftentimes we find that they self-sabotage or create insurmountable circumstances because this keeps them in alignment with that internal narrative. If your internal voice says that you are worthless, lazy, arrogant, unworthy of love, then you won't be able to tolerate success and peace for very long because it would be incongruent. According to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society, four times as many women have MS as men. Now this may be attributed to the way that some women react to a strongly patriarchal household. If this household translated into being highly oppressive and maybe coercively demanding, then it can be very confusing to a little girl. If they or a strong female influence in their life seemed to feel like they were forced to undertake hard physical work or serve against their will or play a role that felt demeaning or subservient, then they, the little girl, will feel like they're trapped in a system that cannot be escaped. It's possible that maybe you had a mother or a, a female primary caregiver who felt like she had no support or no help in doing the load that she had, maybe in raising the children or that she had to sustain everyone all by herself. This may have been the excuse or the reason for neglect or resentment that you felt as a child from your mother. Now, deep inside, you made the belief that you weren't worthy enough of love for your mother to break free from the system, and you may hold anger and resentment against her. Another common trait of people who do MS is people-pleasing, which probably makes since given some of the previous information. They feel that they have exhausted themselves trying to earn love and respect, and now they really resent it. Because they were always after validation and affirmation, they never really allowed themselves to connect emotionally or intimately. So now they feel alone and alienated, even if they have a wide circle of friends, colleagues, or family. This further confirms the idea that they will never actually achieve the love they desperately seek and they become full of desperate rage. As they increase the severity of the MS, they're in effect wreaking revenge upon those who never loved them by making those people now take care of them. For others, they refuse to accept any help or partnership. They have a deeply held belief that they need to do it themselves or take care of it themselves. Now this eventually becomes a martyr program subconsciously hoping that this will produce enough guilt in their loved ones to force them to validate and notice their pain. What they don't recognize is that this is a major form of control and manipulation, which is very reminiscent of their childhood environment. Again, given the amount of women versus men who deal with MS, it's important to note that MS can often appear when a woman begins having children. The very act of reproducing sends an evolutionary signal that we need to deal with our trauma so that it doesn't get passed down to the next generation. Because of the unique factors that contribute to doing MS, this is especially difficult because there has been made a, an intense effort not to feel the things that happened. So the fact that the body starts to give up at the very point in time where we need it the most to take care of our young, that just confirms a deeply held internal bias of not being good enough or it aggravates the idea that you have never really gotten the love, time, nurturing, or attention you need, and now you're gonna be expected to give it all 
to another human being. And it can feel very unfair. So even though you want to give and love your, you know, your child, it can really feel like the child is taking everything from you, taking your time, taking your emotion, taking your body, even possibly taking away the, the love and affection from other members of your family. When the MS goes into full effect and you're not able to properly mother your children, then that continues a cycle of neglect and not enough that will be then passed down to the next generation. The good news is change is possible. And though it can feel threatening to challenge the victim mindset, there is true freedom on the other side. In Mind Change, we've worked with many clients who are dealing with MS, who found the bravery to face the things they didn't even know were fueling the disease. You deserve real freedom, freedom from the chains of approval and validation. It is possible. The internal voice can be changed and you can make peace with your mind, with your body, and with your past. You know, our bodies are so amazing. With mind change, we never want to remove a coping mechanism that is effectively helping someone deal with what they're carrying subconsciously. But the better option is to remove the offending thoughts, memories, beliefs, and experiences. Then our filters change and our perception expands. The world seems less dangerous, less toxic. Thank you again for joining us on the Mind Change Podcast. I look forward to seeing you every other week as we dive into these fascinating topics. Thanks to all of you who have left so many wonderful five-star reviews. And we appreciate when you comment on our pages or on our YouTube page or our Instagram or through the podcast platforms to let us know if there's a disease, symptom, or ailment you would like to hear covered. And maybe you're looking to go deeper. We do have online courses available to help support you in your journey. The courses come with two sessions with a trained practitioner, a supportive community, and live monthly mentoring calls with us to help you get the tools that you need to heal. For those of you who've, who are ready to heal now, we have transformational mind change retreats. These are life changing opportunities to come and join us on a private island off the coast of Belize and get the personalized, intense help you need. For more info, go to our website at mindchange.com and look for our retreats. Until next time, thank you for joining us on the Mind Change Podcast where we are changing the world one mind at a time.